Bueno, muchachos. Ahora sí, ¿les parece? Vamos a verlo del tema del de Cyberpunk 2077, el Nightwire City, City, Night City Wire, lo dije como el culo, pero tengo ganas de ver de qué va porque todavía no lo vi. Eh, sí vi el trailer, eh, me encantó. Eh, igualmente, bueno, después tenemos que ver así cómo se va a ver gráficamente, no tengo la placa del video, pero bueno, eh, seguramente son uno de los juegos más esperados de, del año. Va, hay mucho hype. Es más, me parece que está sobre hypeado, ¿no? Me parece en algún punto. Eh, pero bueno, chicos, ahí va. A ver. Ponle play a esto. Nos voy a poner max quality que haya. 1080. Bien, le subo volumen al taco. Dígame si está bien el volumen y eso. Ok, tiene todo. Sangre, gore, violencia intensa, desnudez. Lindo, me gusta todo. Uno, uno, uno tras otro me gusta todo. El uso de alcohol, las drogas. Bien, perfecto. A ver, desnudez y por separado, por si las dudas. Contenido sexual fuerte. Es como que no podía entrar en lo mismo. Es como que es tan fuerte el otro. Me parece que contenido sexual fuerte es medio como... Esa secuencia de, de Last of Us 2 o ese tipo de cosas debe ser por eso, ¿no? Medio ahí, nazote, algo medio macabro. No sé qué debe tener. Vamos a ver. Está fuerte. Ahí va. Hello and welcome to Night City Wire episode 5. Es la misma papilla, ¿no? Sí. Ah, Head of Communication, sí, Holly B. All things Cyberpunk 2077. Now we're going to start today's episode with a new trailer that will take a closer look at Johnny Silverhand before we go behind the scenes with Keanu Reeves and have a chat to English adaptation director Boris who will tell us exactly what it was like to work with him. Then we'll be exploring the original score and talking about some of the radio stations you might listen to while driving around Night City. Before we take a look at the Jolly Tech. Vieron que Doctor Respect tiene que hacer algo o hizo una acción con ellos con el tema de de la música del juego. Scheme which anyone can take part in no matter which platform you'll be playing Cyberpunk. Como que tiene música DMCA. Put today's episode with a brand new gameplay trailer. It's a busy episode and it will be our final episode of Night City Wire. Es el último capítulo, por eso es tan importante. Día de diciembre, boludo. Ah, oh, falta 20 días, ¿no? Faltan exactamente 20 días. Este mes tiene 30, chat. Johnny Silverhand. Where did you even come from? How are we even talking? Got to get out of here, I understand. And I'll kill anyone who gets in my way. You weren't dreaming, B. Those were memories. You two are connected in a way I can't make head or tail of. Who? Me and who, Vic? Silverhand. Johnny Silverhand. Real talk of the town back in my day. He died like. Pero no tiene que hacer un cosplay ese personaje. Quiero ver la conducción del juego, pero las armas se eh, ve muy bien, boludo. Esta, esta parte me llamó mucho la atención, boludo. Las armas se siente como medio rage. O muy limpio el HAD, además, ¿no? El HAD es to play. You're a dick, you know. And you're a cunt. Maybe we'll fit together after all. Oh, qué no riff diciendo cunt, tipo una palabra bastante fuerte. Sometimes eh? we like to share things with you, and other times we like to keep secrets, and it can be worth it for that big reveal. El modelo de Keanu Reeves, medio que como que tuvo un downgrade, parece Dante Esposta. Eh, estuve viendo memes de eso. Habría que ver... Ok, ¿ven esta, esta presentación? Esta presentación, ok, vamos a ver exactamente acá veo. No, no, esta chica es real, espera, espera. 
esta parte de acá, ok. De, de, tengamos la imagen ahí, ¿no? Mírenla perfectamente. Ahora, vamos a la parte del juego cuando ve, lo ves ahí quieto al chabón. Es como que esto está cerca al lado. Entiendo que es distinto a cuando está parado acá. Al modelo. Pero el chabón no se ve así, man. Es como que es una versión medio downgrade, medio 360, como que pasó de gráficos de, no sé, ponele por así decir, de PlayStation 5 o Serie X a esto. Pero tipo teniéndolo medio al lado, tampoco para tanto, pero eh, los detalles acá, por ejemplo, la vena, todo este tipo de cosas, se nota, se ve bien. Para mí debe ser, debe ser medio una semática, esto es una cinemática para mí y medio que escuché y vi críticas de eso. Um, oh, lo no, bien. A ver qué onda. En la, en la optimización, sí. El tema que está pasando con estos juegos es que están tratando de arrastrar a la anterior generación de consolas, de juegos. No sé si vieron los requisitos actualizados. Ahora vamos a verlos al final del, del, de todo el video. Porque están metiendo optimización como para que lo pueda jugar cualquier persona, me parece. Y venderse más, ¿no? So let's go behind the scenes to see how Keanu Reeves brought rocker boy Johnny Silverhand to life. You could say it's breathtaking. Cyberpunk 2077, Johnny Silverhand. I've had the opportunity to do voiceover a few. <laughs> Johnny Silverhand. It's a cover. I've had. <laughs> it's cool. Did you tire the cosa? Si una pose de rock full pepe tipo. Had the opportunity to do voiceover a few times. I'd worked on a cartoon. I had done some documentary. ¿Saben qué? El otro día me enteré que él hizo la voz de un personaje de Toy Story 4. ¿Vieron el chaboncito que va arriba de la Espérate, un permit porque Ah, sí, cuando es te ve mal. Sí, 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 ahí te leí, te leí perfecto. La mala palabra a veces mi tipo el automóvil lo saca. Eh, cuestión es esta. Eh, ah, eso es lo que iba. Hace la voz de un personaje del de que va arriba de la motito en Toy Story 4. No sé si la vieron. Que está... Nada, como que... Es... Ay, me estoy pensando en la secuencia. Bueno, el chabón que iba con la... arriba de la motito que hacía stunts. Bueno, ese chaboncito hace la voz de... Bueno, hace la voz del Canelo Rips. ¿Cuántas veces lo pintó bien? You know you don't gotta speak out loud to talk to me, and I've processed some shit, changed my mind, don't want you dead anymore. You know, and got to play a character in so many kind of. Es más, me atrevería a decir que se ve muy Xbox One, Xbox One, los gráficos o PlayStation 4. In ways, because of different paths or threads or choices, so you almost get to play one moment, say you have a decision, would you take a bullet for? With three different behavioral attitudes, so that was fun. You know, he's uh, Johnny's either a dick, or he's happy, or he's trying to convince. You know why? Because you've always been a fucking pussy, Carrie. So it's been fun, and that was kind of what I was interested in. You know, the different options that the game could play. Piensa en una comparación media chota, pero es como que el chabón tiene buena voz y, y tiene experiencia y tiene una forma... Es como el Ricardo Darín, pero versión norteamericana es cualquiera la comparación que estoy tirando. Pero es como que dice, ah, sí, eh, nos falta alguien grosso con experiencia y tipo, ah, Keanu Reeves. Y acá en Argentina, no, mete a Keanu Reeves que vende... No, perdón, a, a Darín que vende y ya fue, tipo así. ¿Qué onda, Berglin? ¿Todo bien? Motion capture, baby. Johnny Silverhand. Uh, so one of the first elements that I was involved in with the game was motion capture. Ooh. I've done a, a fair bit of motion capture. I did it with uh, in the Matrix films. So to start doing the motion capture for Johnny, it was all very familiar to me. The only difference, I think, technologically was how close they were going to real-time review. But creatively, amigo, cuando hacen estas secuencias así de escanearte todo el cuerpo completo y ves la cantidad de cámaras que hay para tipo detectar cada cada es, es necesario tanto, boludo, es una locura ver esto. John Wick vi la primera igual, eh. No veo la última, no, no me condena nada de la última. 
Está bastante bueno, Durango. Después cuando la vea me va a acordar de Padita. Sense of starting a, a library of, of gesture and the toolbox. Igual hace lo que puede. The animators to work with for the character. So you get to see Johnny as the rock star. You know, you hear about his military past. You know, and he's fighting for his survival. So he's kind of got all of these things leading into the moment of this guy. It's really a kind of an interpretation because I think there's a Johnny Silverhand in all of us. He's got a lot of energy. He's got a good sense of humor, if not a little dark at times. He's very passionate. He cares. Qué bien que la lleva igual a 56, ¿no? Eve, but he's also super experienced in life. He's got certainly an appetite for life. Me copa eso, diseño de personaje que tiene así de enemigos como que parecía super Wolfenstein. You know, but he has a cause that he wants to fight against the corporacracy. Come on. Don't tell me you're not interested. Corporacracy for a different kind of freedom. Corps have long controlled our lives, taken lots. Milkar. Least I believe it. No, este carte no es su primer rodeo, boludo. What the actual fuck? Acá que tiene colgado. Lol, boludo. And now they're after our souls. Least I believe it's something bigger. Least I had a call. ¿Viste Matrix ayer? Debería reverla. Pero solo con el traje de captura. What CD Projekt Red has shared with me in the way that they talk about the game and what I've seen is that it's got a... ¿Está Alex? ¿Está Alex el capo? ¡Ah! ¡El cartel! ¡Es verdad que está él, boludo! ¡Es el de Alex el capo, boludo! ¡Holy shit! Imagínate ver el ad tuyo de tu cara. ¡Qué genio, boludo! After our souls, at least I believed in something bigger. At least I had a cause. What CD Projekt Red has shared with me in the way that they talk about the game and what I've seen. Se destaca mucho de no de noche gráficamente parece, ¿no? La iluminación me encanta. El problema es medio con los días. De día. It's like who are you? How do you want to play the character? If I got to kill, I'll kill. If I need your body, I'll fucking take it. You can go into action, you can go into mystery, you can problem solve in different ways. And where you go in this world, there's so much detail, there's so many different things that you can go off into that are really interesting um, and fun. There's a real drama to the game and emotional stakes to it. And then there's lighter sides to it. Of course. ¿Por qué frené un culo en el medio de la pantalla, chat? Ver esto de noche, me pasa lo mismo con Watch Dogs, se ve precioso, pero lo ves de día y después es como que, mmm, tipo, no, no está tan bueno. Hay sides to it, and of course the music, production design, technologically, how cutting edge it is. I don't think there'll be a game that looks like this. Yeah, it's intense. Lo revenden, loco. Creo que no hay un juego que se vea como este, tipo... Hay un, hay un mínimo dangre. Pero creo que es como para que se pueda jugar en, en casi cualquier PC y ese tipo de cosas. ¿eh? Ahora, si lo que está pasando con el tema de la tecnología, verlo ustedes, por ejemplo, en YouTube, o verlo yo, o verlo en un 4K o tal cosa, eh, hay bitrate, hay muy bajo bitrate y los streamings se suelen hacer a veces con inclusive 5.000, 6.000 de bitrate. De, de, de empresas para que no se les trabe a todo el mundo que lo quiera ver e inclusive a 30 FPS a veces viste el de, me había quejado la otra vez con el, eso del de Sony cuando me habían hecho la entrevista ahí en Mundo G y eso tipo, miren, la presentación, la presentación de Playstation 5 todo lindo, pero me gustaría verlo de frente, porque ves la presentación eh, y siempre está a un bitrate perro, per, pedorrísimo, con 30 FPS, a veces menos y no se puede ver eso. Tipo, o sea, me encantaría ver el Dark Souls, o digo, el Demon Souls de PlayStation 5 de enfrente. Sí, siempre, chat. 
before we get into what it was like to actually work with Keanu Reeves, was it always him that you imagined as Johnny Silverhand? Was there anybody else that you ever considered having for the role? Yeah, Holly, it was a long, arduous, extended uh, process to imagine uh, what Johnny Silverhand is supposed to look like, what he's supposed to sound like, what he's supposed to act like. Everybody and their great-grandmother seemed to have an idea. And the process actually involved a lot of people, the game director, uh, character artists, writers, marketing staff. Uh, I could go on. Uh, you know, we cast a pretty broad net initially. Uh, but we considered actors. We considered uh, enlisting uh, actual rock stars, you know, band frontmen to play the role. At one point, we even toyed with the idea of taking and reviving uh, a recently deceased, longtime luminary of the recording industry. Now, some might say that it was a pipe dream to assume that we could do that, technologically other or otherwise. Well, uh, I'll see you uh, that pipe dream and raise you another, because uh, one could easily say that it was a pipe dream to assume that we could successfully pitch to and ultimately enlist Keanu Reeves to play the role. Now, I'm sure this is on everybody's mind right now, but what was it actually like to work with Keanu Reeves? Because even he said in the video, this was like nothing he'd ever done before. A question uh, that I'm sure uh, anybody who gets to work with Keanu has to answer, and I get where it comes from. Keanu is a consummate professional. When he's at work, he's at work. He's completely and utterly focused. To that work, he brings his talent, he brings his art, his technical skill, and overwhelming charm. And yes, the scale and the complexity were and are dazzling. Uh, Non-linearities, the variation in attitude, mood, emotion that are required to achieve them, they can be difficult to get your head around. And if you take all of Johnny Silverhand's bits uh, you know, his screen time. It's like doing the equivalent of many, many... Supuestamente el tipo es muy gracioso. Onda, es muy buena onda para estar. In, uh, a handful of mocap sessions and under two dozen VO recording sessions, four to six hours each. Um, and that took focus, it took control, it took dedication, all of which uh, Keanu provided in heaps. So tell Cuatro, us seis horas, bro. the character of Johnny Silverhand and why he's important to the story but also why it's important to have him played by like such a powerful personality. Okay, uh, how do I do this without uh, spoiling too much uh, for gamers? In the broadest sense, I'd say Johnny Silverhand is a co-protagonist uh, rather than uh, a sidekick. Co-protagonista. There are buddy bits in the game, uh, but uh, in the end, uh, Johnny has an agenda and he pursues it and V has an agenda and has to pursue that and for to get things done V and Johnny have to work together things some of the things they do are V's and some of the things they do are Johnny's and some of them are important to both of them that uh, bonds gamers I think to both characters uh, both characters agendas become equally important uh, both characters' continued existence becomes equally important. For any a gamer or viewer or reader, what you have to do is create that bond between them and the protagonist or protagonist. You have okay. to make uh, those characters understandable to them, likable to them, lovable to them. With that understanding, even when they do something not entirely admirable or say something... Igual es jugable porque hay vistas en primera persona del chabón, todo, esto, como esto. And there's no denying casting uh, a powerful personality, somebody who exudes uh, charm by the truckload, helps to further all that. So Boris, can you tell us, like, what does Keanu bring to Johnny Silverhand? What, what Keanu brings to Johnny Silverhand is nothing... Qué difícil explicar esto, tipo, sin poder eh, mostrar el juego. O sea, no poder mostrar el juego, sin poder saber la historia del juego, ¿no? O sea... Less than Keanu. Uh, I could parse that into a string of adjectives. Porque nadie sabe quién es Silverhand. O sea, dicen todos Johnny Silverhand. Because it wouldn't begin to do him justice. Sí, entiendo que es un rockero, todo lo que explicaron un poquito, pero no, no de jugarlo. Neo is Keanu, Keanu is Neo. John Wick is Keanu, Keanu is John Wick. John Constantine, Johnny Mnemonic, bueno, Jonathan Harker, Johnny Utah, they're all Keanu. And to todos se llaman Johnny, boludo. ¿Qué onda? ¿Se dieron cuenta? Will play Cyberpunk 2077. Cuando, cuenta como antes de morir, como, jugás como Johnny. 
To my mind, at least, star power is a fact and dos iguales, man. Important factor for uh, broad. Como que te digan, no, acá eh, Ricardo Darín hace Juan, Juan Cartés, Juan D'Artés, eh, Juan esto, Juan lo otro, Juan, eh, Juancho, eh, Juan o dos, eh, Juanito, eh, Juanito y su amiga. Es como, <risa> ¿por qué tanto? <risa> Para mí agarró, agarró el manager y le dijo, ah, vos tenés cara de Juan, no de Keanu Reeves. Dijo. <risa> Buenas prox. Uh, body suit with uh, uh, globules all over it and I put on the head cam and then we proceeded to block and then play out scenes between V and Johnny and we did it over and over and over again. As we did that, I must have poked Johnny uh, in the chest hundreds of times uh, and I must have uh, yelled fuck off at Johnny 35 times, you know. Uh, and, uh, well, I never no, expected to be doing any of that. No, I never imagined I'd be doing any of that. Well, Boris, thank you so much for joining us. I, your voice in the studio is quite iconic. So whenever I talk to you, I feel like I'm in a trailer. It's amazing. It's not all that. It's not all that, Holly. Thank you. Well, for Qué buena voz para aplicar, tiene razón. Soviet era synthesizers to body heat radio. It's time to explore the original score and Esto. some of the radio stations you'll be listening to when you're driving around Night City. A ver lo de la música, ¿no? O obviamente va a ser todo medio synthwave futurista. Score is the main vessel of emotions in both movies and video games and Cyberpunk 2077. Mersin, qué nombre raro. Para nosotros, ¿no? Esta secuencia se ve preciosa, boludo. O sea, como que los escenarios se ven de la reputa madre. Score is the main vessel of emotions in both movies and video games, and Cyberpunk 2077 is no different. Y ven estas partes y como que los personajes, o por lo menos lo que se ve acá, se ve como medio medio. Pero los detalles, así el terreno o las texturas son preciosas. It actually took us a long time to find the right. ¿Por qué se llama Peter John? Color of the music. Getting that sound together is almost as important as the actual look of the game itself. Because la remera dice bueno, it's been good. It's emotional connection to the game. Hay un poquito de rockcito ahí. Uh, re duro. Man, me da la sensación con todo eso de las drogas, del sexo y todo, que es... Ideas was to take the cyberpunk genre out of the 80s and give it a 90s flair. We took elements from rave, IDM, industrial, and make them fit our narrative purposes. Me copa. We've decided that close to the 100% of our music would be purely electronic. That's why we tried to stick to analog synths as much as possible, so it's got a warmth to it. I'm super proud of the team we've managed to gather for this project. For me, it was basically my own personal aesthetic matching the aesthetic of the game. When I read the brief, I was... Ese, ese, este laborito así de, de sintes y de ecualizar todo con todo analógico es un laburo de la reputa madre mal, boludo. La gente cuando hace música así... No sé si vieron la casa de Dead Mouse alguna vez. Boludo. Está zarpado en esto, literal. Son todos racks, son todos botones. Y uno piensa cuando escucha, ah, esto lo hace con una notebook. Sí, sí, sí. Puede que lo componga en un notebook un poquito o arme las cosas. Pero vos ves lo que hace el loco. El chabón está, está quemado. Está re quemado mal, boludo. La casa del ratón es una locura. Véanla. Si ven así, tipo en, en YouTube, búsquenla, boludo. Es una locura, man, lo que tiene. Es, pero. Esto. Esto, ¿vieron los canales de estos que están acá abajo mío? Y por ahí las consolas que tiene, nada, pero 50 veces más. Y después, bueno, van a los Lambos, todo ahí, tranqui. Amo que le dieron mucha bola al audio, ¿eh? 
Igual siempre le dan bola con Witcher. Tiene muy buen soundtrack. Para, es completamente distinto, ¿no? El trabajo, pero lo loco que se pueden expandir hacia otras cosas, sí. Well, I can do that all day long, so you'll just, you'll just, you'll just have to tell me what you like, what you don't like. Cool. Okay. It's not going to sound like one thing, depending on what part of the city you're in. We basically escort every quest pretty much with custom assets created specifically for that quest. We ended up having over seven and a half hours of music in, in Cyberpunk. Working on Cyberpunk has just been insane. <laughs> um, I can seriously say that I've never worked with such a bunch of mad people in my life and mad brilliant. ¿Qué te tan chalada? Bueno, la traducción está medio medio, ¿no? The gear that we use... Esta arma parece un BR de Halo. Esta. No, nada que ver. No eres. Nada que ver. Comes out of boutique shops or they have vintage synthesizers like this Polyvox. I really hope all this effort put into creating this score pays off with satisfying and enjoyable listening and gaming experience. Hello, Night City! What shaking Night Good City! Good morning, Night City! Your man, Stan here. Ooh, I love this town. Love it like you might love a mother who popped you out on the steps of an orphanage once and now stops you to ask if you got a smoke for her. And now, a shout out to all the lowlifes over at the Atlantis. Ladies and gents, here's that all-time classic in Night City. Soundtrack is one of the key elements we use to build believable world. We've invited artists from around the world, incredible talents, incredible musicians, to write and produce songs just for us, for this project. The soundtrack for Cyberpunk is insane. So the soundtrack being all the songs that they've got going on, whether it's on the radio or on the background, all these just amazing bands. We've got over 150 custom genre-bending tracks, all waiting for you to discover them by yourselves. You know, the reason I want to be a part of Cyberpunk is, well, basically, I know The Witcher is super sick, and then I actually got to play a preview of the game which was fucking incredible. I've always wanted to do something connected to a video game, so I was pretty excited when this came in, and it was like an instant yes. I was kind of imagining what it would be like being a character Bad in the boy. Game. The person that's a musician no of this world in this time has grew up in that space. This isn't just some fun shit. There's also an intellectual and spiritual history to this world that's been constructed for you, you know? We want to provide you with the soundtrack to fucking shit up. Like, how can you not want to be a part of that? Remix, no? For those of you who can't wait to hear more from our composers, we're going to be releasing a special six track Cyberpunk 2077 EP featuring tracks from the game's original score onto streaming services for you to enjoy for free. Ah, se puede escuchar? This episode, so you can give them a listen later. In addition, if you're planning on live streaming Cyberpunk, or if you just want to make videos, we want to introduce you to a new mode that will allow you to disable certain copyrighted tracks. Okay. We know that for content creators, licensed music can sometimes be problematic. So with this new mode, you'll be able to disable a small number of selected tracks which could cause some issues, replacing them with a different song, helping to avoid any problems. Ok, está bueno la función, la verdad que le hayan prestado atención al creador de contenido, está bueno. Gracias, Pepe. And for PC players, you'll be able to turn it on and off in the game options. Don't forget, as with all episodes of Night City Wire, if you're tuning in late or if you just want to watch anything again, we will be uploading everything to our channels soon. Now from Polish to Chinese. When Cyberpunk launches, it will have VO in 10 different languages. So we're going to take a closer look at the Jali technology, which is ensuring each and every one is as authentic as possible. Oh, muy bueno Hi, esto, boludo. Va a haber un buen lip sync en un juego. In Toronto, Ontario. In this video, we're going to show you a little bit about Jali, the software. 
9 de diciembre. Ahí sale. Brudo. Suite of tools and a suite of services uh, that uh, result in uh, what we think is the coolest and best uh, and highest quality facial performance on characters. Oh, is that supposed to sound familiar? It's automatically generated on a face based on um, audio dialogue, audio speech from a voice actor. Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. Muy bueno, que en todos los idiomas But tipo hace un lip sync. Tries to get to the root of what is being expressed in the vocal performance and put that on a 3D character. That's Rogue, best fixer in all of Night City. There is just an incredible amount. Sí, no, primero en estudio, chicos. In this game. Yo ya estudié, así que me voy a poner a jugar. <risa> no, 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 no. Primero estudio, primero estudio. Procedural solution allows you to animate over and over and over again at tremendous scale. Jolly is what powers every single character in the game of Cyberpunk 2077. All of the languages that the game has been localized for. Ahora escúchame. Este mierda es de Anthony Gilchrist. ¿Es tu contacto? ¿Hat er infos zum Konvoi durchsickern lassen? All you're doing is changing an attribute. For example, speech style. If you want your character to, to shout instead of mumble, instead of issuing a set of commands that redo the animation, instead you click an attribute going from, in this case, mumble to shout. But you walk, you bleed, but you walk, you bleed. But you walk, you bleed. If the lip sync is right, you don't notice. If the faces match and match the performance, you don't notice because you're too busy paying attention to how awesome the game is, how much you care about these characters, how much, what, what you're going to do. And that's what we want. That to me is, that's, that's the sizzle. Don't you know you owe the sheriff a word when you pay his town a visit? To tell him what's brought you here. Maybe even over a cup of coffee. It's, 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 okay, voy a ser honesto. Se sigue notando como robotizado. Entiendo que sea todo artificial, todo el tema de que no tengan, de que, no tengan que invertir. Está buenísima la tecnología. Pero still, si le prestas atención a la boca, me parece como que está... Medio que, como que hablan a esto. O sea, entiendo que por lo menos este personaje al final hicieron como demostrarlo. Medio como que se sentía así. Como que hablaba medio así. No, no, no modulaba mucho. En otros personajes se notaba más la modulación o cuando aumentaba el tono de voz y eso. Pero qué sé yo. No sé si será el volumen, ojalá que quede bien, ¿no? Excited to reveal digital and in-game rewards for Cyberpunk 2077. It's our way of saying thank you for your support. Now, every copy of the game comes with digital downloadable goodies such as the art book, the original score, and a digital comic all from the Cyberpunk universe. But there's more you can also claim in-game items for Cyberpunk 2077. For example, you could be rocking the Wolf School jacket. For Muy bueno. No, no, el símbolo de ahí de, de Witcher. Connecting the game to your GOG account. And if you have other CD... Trabaja con GOG. Obviamente ellos, no sé si saben, pero sí. Games, Está bueno. The Witcher or Gwent, you can get even more. And it works both ways. If you connect the game to your GOG account, you can also unlock special in-game items. En un momento daban gratis The Witcher 3 si conectabas la cuenta. Si tenías The Witcher 3 comprado en cualquier otra plataforma y la conectabas con GOG, lo cual está buenísimo. Ah, úsenlo, chat, en serio. O sea, tengo el GOG, tengo todas las cuentas conectadas y te avisa si vos ya tenés un juego como comprado en otra plataforma o estás suscrito a Game Pass y ya lo tenés ahí y no, no, te no hace falta que lo compres y cosas así. And the breathtaking title. Now, this new My Reward program is for everybody. No matter which platform you're playing Cyberpunk on, you'll be able to get your digital goodies and in-game items. Now, this is just the beginning and there'll be more items coming in the future and we'll have more information on My Rewards soon. As always, don't forget if you miss anything or if you just want to watch again, we will be uploading everything to our channels soon. So before we take a look at that new gameplay trailer, 
we just want to reveal that a number of games media from all over the world have been playing Cyberpunk 20. Ya pudieron jugar los medios. And you'll be able to read their latest impressions when this episode of Night City Wire finishes, so you can mm. check them out. So now let's wrap up. Para que vayas abriendo la boca, es como que fue medio introducción media mala, pero. Ok, vamos al trailer de gameplay del juego. At CD Project Red, we dedicate ourselves to telling immersive stories. Yet with every new project, we set out to make our games bigger, more complex, deeply engaging. Buenísimo cuando pone una voz en off. Let's get you home. Cyberpunk 2077 marries exploration of a vast open world with kinetic combat, sandbox, story changing player choices, and RPG. character development. All to bring RPG. you into our vision of the dark future. You ever feel like the city doesn't give you a choice? You either burn alive in it. Well, it never existed at all. The year is 2077. An economic crisis culminating in nuclear conflict has left America in pieces. With most of the continent degenerating into lawless war zones, people from all over have converged on the already overcrowded Night City, one of the world's last great megalopolises. A hub amassing the best in resources and know-how, and home to manufacturers of cutting-edge technologies. Night City continues to offer the promise of a civilized future. What? No, no, this isn't happening. Oh, but it is. But in the city streets, a merciless struggle for power rages. Gangs, corporate agents, hustlers, religious cultists, politicians, and all manner of criminals strive to outplay one another. Ordinary people get caught in the crossfire. Looking for justice in Night City. I seek revenge, much more feasible here. In this world, consumed by never-ending conflict, sometimes only an outsider will get the job done. Elizabeth tells me you have answers for us. I'm all ears. And that's you, an urban mercenary, a cyber-enhanced gun for hire. We seem to understand each other. Take this, too. As a mercenary, You swear no allegiance. You've chosen the outlaw life and trust that your abilities will carry you up a ruthless underground social ladder. Heart of Night City. That's it right there. To thrive as a merc, you need the right combination of gear, skills, and reputation. Dex had a load to say about you. I hope he wasn't overselling. With the money you earn, you can turn yourself into a living weapon, buying guns and enhancements in the hundreds. Muy bueno, chat. As you roam the city streets, you gain the experience you need to upgrade abilities and acquire perks. Combine the right skills and gear to create a gunslinger with inhuman reflexes. A stealthy netrunner with command of all surrounding tech. Or practically anyone in between. Esas armas raras que parecen como control. In Cyberpunk 2077, you steal a prototype biochip that can set you up for life. Being filthy rich. When its sealed container is ruptured, the only way to prevent the biochip from failing is to slot it into your head. It turns out it contains the digitized soul of Johnny Silverhand, a dead rocker boy with violence on his mind. I mean to say there's an actual terrorist in my head. Eso explica right mucho. Now. He's out for revenge. Aims to bring down the megacorp that made the chip. Do whatever it takes to stop him, defeat him, gut him. What is in your head can shift the balance of power in Night City. The high and mighty will do anything to lay their hands on it. Ah, uh, como que me hubiera gustado enterarme de esto en el juego, chicos. Pero bueno, ya está. Está muy bueno el giro que tiene con Johnny Silverhand. The choices you make will shape your story and determine how events unfold. V, you gotta take them down. That's why we're here. But not everything in Night City is a matter of life and death. Sometimes it's about style, choosing your look, your ride, <laughs> pastime, 
Man, me parece muy Akira Meets Blade Runner No, uh, imagínate jugarlo en VR Si pudiera tener un VR que Una máquina que lo corra, ¿no? También así ¿Tiene soporte VR el juego? Es una locura si lo juegas en VR Welcome también to the next generation of open world adventure. Immerse yourself in Cyberpunk 2077. Es muy, es muy miren, miren la moto esta la moto es muy Akira, el mundo todo así, todo. Es, es, es buenísimo. Me, o sea, literalmente es lo que yo consumí así de chico. Eh, todo en un juego, básicamente. Y con algo como un RPG con The Witcher que me gustó muchísimo. A principio de año lo pasé el 3, todo, me encantó. Eh, no, va a ser una locura. Tengo, o sea... Me la sube un montón, literal. El juego este me, me encanta. Todo lo que. Cada vez que veo algo me vuelvo loco. Literal. Eh, me gustaría no tener tan altas las expectativas. Por eso no quiero ver tanto a veces. Porque a veces termino. Termino cuando lo, lo quiero jugar el juego o algo así. Me encuentro como que. Oh, no sé si tenía muy altas las expectativas. O como que. Me, me, me la bajo un poquito. ¿Vieron? O sea, no quiero. No quiero tipo. O sea, te quiero esperar a que salga, probarlo y jugarlo y ver recién ahí. Pero sí, cada vez que veo algo me la resube. Mal. Eh, no sé si les pasa a ustedes, pero bueno. Para que vayan viendo. ¿Qué dice ahí Dante? Qué tóxico. Eh, y eso que me encantó el de Witcher 3, pero no tengo tiempo para agarrarlo. De esa sí, también me encanta, pero le pasa lo mismo que a muchos. Lo dejé un poco y después pasa a volver a jugarlo. Creo que de Witcher, cuando... Tenés que tener un mood y estás tranquilo y te pones a jugar y, y de golpe te, te encanta el mundo y de golpe cuando vas descubriendo, vas conociendo otros personajes. Nada, las la side story, la side story, no la principal, son hermosas y cómo se conecta todo. Eso es precioso. ¿Viste? Cuando agarras... Nada, en muchos juegos RPG a veces se siente como que haces la quest principal y después side stories. Las side stories se siente como side stories, se siente como una mierda, se siente como que tenés que ir a llevar... Del punto A a B monedas, por ejemplo, por así decir. Eh, de, o una, una misión es tipo del punto A a B, mata a este y volvé y tráeme, tráeme la recompensa a su cabeza, lo que sea. Se siente tan cliché, tan repetitivo, tan pelotudo a veces, pero lo copado es como eh, lo que vos hiciste, eh, de cierta manera, no es que influencia, pero tiene que ver y está reconectado todo y es hermoso. A veces terminas misiones y, y por ahí... Sí, habiendo, no sé, un espíritu o algo latente, eh, o todavía no cierra ahí, está buenísimo, es hermoso como la misión de escoltas. Así que, no, a mí, a mí la verdad que el laburo que hicieron con The Witcher me, me encantó, lo amé. No, no puedo decir otra cosa, o sea, estoy con las expectativas altísimas eh, por eso. Ahora, creo que con la cantidad de empleados y la gente que está trabajando detrás de Gozo ya no es más si sí, Project Red una empresa indie. Así que tiene la vara bastante alta, digamos, en sí. Con eso. Eh, bueno, chicos, bueno, esto básicamente fue ahí ver reaccionando a lo que sería el Night City Wire de Episode 5. Eh, como saben, lo estoy grabando así para subirlo a YouTube. Seguramente si quieren pasar por el stream en vivo y conocernos, ahí está en Twitch.tv Retallar. Siempre estamos un... Los viernes, ¿qué estamos haciendo? Ah, viernes, domingos y martes a las 7 de la tarde. Después todos los otros días bonus, básicamente. 